Good morning. In unison, good morning, your honor. Good morning, your honor. In unison, good morning. I told you that when I knew that we were going to have a day that you weren't going to be here, I would let you know as soon as I could. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm sorry, judge, they can't hear you in the back, sir. That's because my microphone's off. Next Friday, not this Friday, the 11th of March, the jury will not come in. We are going to have a day just of motions outside the presence of the jury. So we've set up a whole day to do that. And that will give you a nice break. In addition to that, on Tuesday, next week, I don't have the date in front of me. It would be the 8th. The 8th, we're going to stop one hour early. And I have a meeting that afternoon. So we'll go to, we'll probably go to close to 12 o'clock and then stop. So it's not a day off, but it's an afternoon off, I guess you'd say. All right, those are the only times right now that I know that I can give to you. Let's see, where were you? Are you ready to proceed? Do you want me to show the screen now? I have a few questions first, your honor. But we are going to use the DVD player, so we can alert the court to that. Good morning. Good morning. Deputy Lafferty, you told the ladies and gentlemen of the jury yesterday that you were involved in the execution of the search warrant on Neverland Ranch on the 18th of November, 2003, correct? That's correct. Now, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what time was it when you arrived on the ranch that morning? I arrived on the ranch property at approximately 9.07 that morning. And I think you told us yesterday one of your main responsibilities was to photograph the interior of the main residence. Is that correct? To videotape the videotape. That's correct. And did you keep time, track of the time in which you actually started your responsibilities of videotaping the inside of the residence? Yes, I did. Did you note that in a report? Yes, I did. And what time was it that you started the video of the interior of the main residence at Neverland Valley Ranch? I would have to look on my report to find the exact. Do you have it with you? I do have a copy of it. All right, go ahead. See if that refreshes your recollection. At approximately 0955 hours I began the video of the main residence. Now, later that same day, were you assigned responsibilities in connection with documenting the status of the inside of the interior when the sheriff's department left? Yes, I was. Would you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what your responsibilities were? It's basically the same as I had done the pre-warrant service video. I retraced my steps the same way, going back through the residence, showing the condition of the residence after the search had been completed. And do you recall what time you started doing that particular video documentary? If I could refer to my report for. Please, if you could. At approximately 8.40 p.m., I was told that the search had been completed in the main residence, with the exception of the master bedroom area, and I began the video of the residence at that time. Now, at some point that evening, did you actually go up and video document the main bedroom? Yes, I did. The defendant's bedroom. Yes, I did. What time did that start? That was at approximately 10.38 p.m. And do you have in your notes the time that you actually finished that project? Yes, I do. What was that? That was at 10.55 p.m. Now, after you left the defendant's bedroom, did you do any more video documenting before you left the house? Yes, I did. Would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what it was you did? Prior to leaving the residence, I went back into the dining room, I believe what would be the formal dining room area of the residence, and videotaped copies of the search warrant in the property, itemized list of the items that were taken from the residence during the search warrant. They were laid out on the dining room table and videoed the fact that they had been left at the residence. Were there people actually present when you did that? Yes, there were. Who was present, to your knowledge? I believe it was Sergeant Robel and Lieutenant Klapakis. Were there any representatives of Mr. Jackson there? Yes, there were. Do you remember her name, or their name? I believe her name was Violet. I don't recall the last name. Okay, 
And then did you prepare a report documenting the times at which you performed the various functions you've told the ladies and gentlemen of the jury about? Yes, I did. You incorporated that into an official Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department report? Yes, I did. Now, with regard to the film that you took on the occasion of the 18th, what did you do with that film? That evening, when I returned to the station, it was secured in a locked locker within our forensics unit property area. And then at a later date, it was booked into evidence. Your Honor, I have an exhibit which I've had marked, pre-marked, with the help of the court clerk, as 336. It's a DVD. And counsel has a copy of it, but, may I approach the witness for just a second with this, Your Honor? Yes. I'm going to stay here because I'm going to ask you a few questions and walk back. The particular exhibit marked as 336, the DVD inside of that container there, have you had an occasion to view that before you came to court? Yes, I did. Does that contain the product of your walk through of the ranch on the 18th of November of 2003? Yes, it does. All right. Move that People's Exhibit 336 be admitted into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. All right, it's admitted. Your Honor, I propose to play this for the jury now, with the court's permission. All right, how long is it? It's, I would say, 12 minutes, something like that. Between 10 and 12 minutes, Your Honor. Thank you. And, don't start it. With the court's permission, we may stop it from time to time to ask the officer a comment on certain locations. Of course. Can you do that? Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. Now, Deputy Lafferty, what is being depicted on the scene up there on the screen right now? This is the view from just outside the main entry door of the main residence on the ranch. All right, go ahead. Your Honor, for purposes of the record, when we stop it, we have a recorder, we can reference the point on the tape for the court for the record. Would that be appropriate? You may do that. This would be at 017. Thank you. Go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. Now, Detective Lafferty, do you recognize the area on the video where we've stopped it at this point? Yes, I do. And what is that? This is just inside of the main door, looking to the right as you would face the door from the exterior. And it's a view looking down the hallway towards the master bedroom area. This would be at 029. All right, go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. Now, do you recognize what's at the still at this particular point on the documentary? Yes, I do. What's that? This is an area that had a large number of items in reference to where it is in the residence. It's, as you enter through the front door, if you would proceed straight through the foyer to that, and then turn to the left. Okay, that's at 039. Go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. Stop it right there. Now, we're at a point on the video, which is 140. Can you tell us what this shows? This is the hallway leading from the foyer area towards the master bedroom. Do you see in this photograph the master bedroom doors? There's a small portion of it visible, yes. Would you show that to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? It's the dark brown door here to the, to the right of the screen. All right, go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. Stop. Now, we're at 144. Could you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what's depicted here? This is a view looking down. It's just the inside of the door, the prior stop, the master bedroom door, just inside there. So we're at the entrance of the master bedroom. Just inside of that, yes. All right, go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. All right, stop. All right, Deputy Lafferty, we're at 219 on the video. What is depicted where we stopped it? This is a staircase leading up to the bed area in the master bedroom. We're still inside the suite, the bedroom area. That's correct. Go ahead. Play it. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court.
All right. Go ahead. Keep going. All right. Stop it there. Now, we're at a point on the video which is 307. Would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury where you're located approximately in the bedroom at this point? This is just up at the top landing of the stairs starting to turn to the right. All right. Go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. Stop. Now, we're at a point at 4, 448. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury where we are in that particular portion of the house at this point in the video documentary? This is still in the master bedroom suite back down on the first level. Just inside, actually behind us, would be the main entry door, just starting to go towards the left. All right, go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. All right. Deputy, could you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury where we are at this point? This is the doorway leading into the master bedroom, bath area. And this is at 514. All right. Go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. All right. Stop it. Now, where are we on the documentary at this point? This is just exiting the bathroom area back into a sitting area which is the first room you come into as you enter the master bedroom suite. All right. We're at 654. Go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. Stop. Now, Deputy Lafferty, with regard to the documentation of the search of Neverland Valley Ranch on November 18th, did you also have other responsibilities after you had completed the video documentary? Yes, I did. What was that? To assist Detective Clark in taking still photographs of items that was requested by the searching people at the location. Would you describe to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury how that process worked? We stood by and the people who, when the warrant was executed, there were different teams that were assigned to search various locations. When those people would conduct a search and find an item that they would like to have documented, they would contact us, and we would go and take still photographs of that item before it was collected. When you say to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, before it was collected, does that mean where it is before it's either touched or picked up? To the best of our knowledge, yes. And then you would take a photograph of that? That's correct. And with regard to the area that we've just seen in the photograph that you've described as the master bedroom and the, the first floor and second floor, okay. Were you involved in photo documenting the location of items that were taken from this particular area of the house? There were only a few items that I took photographs of. The majority of that was done by Detective Clark. So there were two of you there doing that? Yes. But you were responsible for taking some of the photographs. All right. Go ahead. Move on. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. Let's stop right here. That's a good place right away. Do you recognize this room? Yes, I do. Would you tell the ladies and gentlemen what this room is, where it's located in the house generally? This room was a room that we refer to as the doll room. It consists of a lot of dolls in there. It's located on the second level of the main residence outside of the master suite. As you enter the end of the foyer, there was a staircase to the right-hand side as you followed the stairs up. When you reached the second story, you went to the left side, which the room is located on the, what would be the northwest area of the floor. All right. Go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. All right. Stop. Now, we've obviously moved into another room. And we've stopped it at 814. Could you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what this particular room is? This is a room that we referred to as the toy room. It is located off of what we referred to as the doll room. It would be on the west side of that location. As you went through shortly before this picture, you entered a restroom area, and would proceed to the right. It went through another door which led into this room. All right. Go ahead. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, People's Exhibit 336, was played for the court. That's it. Don't go back. Okay. I just have one last final question. With regard to the video footage that we've just, that the ladies and gentlemen of the jury have just seen, was that part of the footage from the, when you first got there, or was that from the footage before you left that evening? 
This was the pre-war and service footage. So it's the condition of the house as it was when you arrived there on the morning of the 13th of November of 2003. November the 18th. Thank you. I just wanted to see if you were still awake. No further questions. Cross-examine. Thank you, Your Honor. Is it detective or deputy? At the time that this was, I was a detective. I have since been reassigned and it's deputy now. You prefer, deputy. That's fine. There you go. All right. Deputy Lafferty, why don't we just pick up where we left off? That's always a good place, and we'll go to some of the other areas. First of all, the video that we just saw, and I'm going to go back over some of the parts again. But the video that we just saw, Exhibit 336, was taken on the day of the search of the ranch, correct? That's correct. And it was November the 18th, 2003, is that correct? That's correct. Now, prior to that search, you were briefed along with quite a number of other officers about what was going to take place, is that correct? That's correct. And you received a briefing outline, briefing memo of some sort. Do you recall that? Not all of us were given that. But teams were assigned, and there was a packet given to each team leader. Did you get a packet? No, I did not. You were aware of the purpose of the search, is that correct? Yes. And you were aware that this arose out of allegations by the Arvizo family, is that correct? I do not know who the victim was. Do you recall that the allegations were with regard to activities that may or may not have occurred in February and March of 2003, is that correct? I don't recall. All right. In any event, what you have shown here on the video is part of the tape that you did that day, right? That's correct. And the tape you did that day documents what the premises looked like on November 8th. I'm sorry, November 18th, 2003, correct? That's correct. And it does not document how the premises looked in February or March of 2003. That's correct. All right. Now. How many officers came out to the Neverland Valley location? I'm not aware of the total number. Was it about 45 or so? I don't know. You indicated that you arrived at the ranch at 9.07, and you started your video at 0955 hours, is that correct? That is correct. That's about the same time that Chris Pappas. What's, what's Mr. Pappas's rank? Sergeant. Sergeant. That's about the time that Sergeant Pappas issued a press release to the press, is that correct? I don't know. I wasn't aware what time he did that. You were aware he did that, though, is that right? At some point during the day, yes. And the officers, well, you don't know how many, but there were quite a number, were there not, sir? Yes, there were. You've been trained in the academy before you became a sheriff's deputy, correct? Yes. And part of your training in the academy is to observe and document what you see at a scene, is that correct? Correct. All right. And you were not responsible for counting the number of officers, I take it? No, I was not. But as a trained deputy, you can tell me generally how many people were out there, can't you? More than, say, 30. Yes. All right. And this was Mr. Jackson's home, that was your understanding, is that correct? That's correct. And it's a home that he appeared to live in, is that right? Yes. With his family? It appeared so. And he had, at that time, and has three children, is that correct? I believe so. I don't know the total number. When you went through the house, you saw that there were bedrooms for his three children, did you not? There were three bedrooms upstairs, yes. And they actually had name tags on the door, didn't they? There were tags on the doors, yes. Okay. And each of those bedrooms for the children had a keypad to keep people from coming in without a combination if the door was locked, is that correct? I do recall seeing keypads on the doors. And Mr. Jackson's suite, the part that you showed on the video there, where you go through the double doors, had a keypad to restrict access, is that correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. Now. We'll go back over it so everybody has a clearer picture, but just to do a word picture first, when you come into the house, you showed some pictures. You come into the house, there's a, what you might call a living room area, is that right? 
There's the foyer area where the stairs are. There's a hallway leading north from where the front door area is. And if you go north, there's an area that has a castle. That's correct. But it also has chairs and a television set and clocks and that sort of thing. Is that correct? I don't recall any seating areas in the areas with the castle. Okay. We'll go back and look at the pictures again. But you also showed an area that had sort of a blue plaid, or a sitting area with a fireplace or a fireplace. Is that right? Right. And that's sort of a family room area. Is that right? Yes. That's just off of the kitchen. That's off that big kitchen area that you showed with the copper hood and all that. Correct. Next to that is a dining area. Is that correct? Yes. With a dining table. Something you didn't show on the video. If you were going to the right of what I'm calling the living room area, is a library. Is that right? Do you remember that? Yes. If you walk through the foyer area, and go to the right, there was what appeared to be a library or a study area. So when you go into, let me withdraw that. When you're in that part of the house that we've just described, that's all pretty open. In other words, you can walk freely from the back door through the kitchen, to the family area, the living room, the study, our library, the dining area, the front foyer and the front door, right? Right. Correct. The actual living areas for Mr. Jackson and his children are accessible by using the key pads, is that right? When I was in the residence, those doors were all open. But there were key pads next to the doors. Okay. So to get to the children's room, you would go upstairs, off the foyer to the right, you'd go upstairs, and the children's rooms are all up in that area, is that correct? Correct. That's the same place where you saw what you described as the doll room, is that correct? Correct. And the area you called the toy room, we might call it a craft room, but that's in the same area where the children's suite is, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And, in fact, above that, you didn't show us a picture of this, but above that or in that area is a classroom. Remember the classroom. There was another, appeared to be another toy room. There were numerous toys, things in that area, yes. And there were little desks and sort of a little mini classroom, don't you? Do you recall that? There were a number of things in there. I don't specifically remember desks. Remember there was a train set. I do remember the train. In one end. And if you go in the other end, there's a more open area. There may or may not have been desks there. Is that what you're telling us? I don't specifically recall a desk. But. Alright. Going back. Just doing this with a word picture so the film will make a little more sense, hopefully. When you. If we go back to the front door. And instead of going up the stairs to the children's area we go to the right. There's a hallway. That I think you showed on there. Is that correct? Correct. And that's where the double doors are to Mr. Jackson's private area, is that correct? That's correct. And that's where he has a key pad, correct? Yes. And inside of that area he has what you called a sitting room, but it's like a living room on the first floor, is that right? Correct. There's a grand piano. Yes. There are books. Yes. Lots of books. Yes. Okay. There's a big screen TV. Yes. Okay. And while you're in that first floor area, you showed us on the video something that you referred to as the bathroom. Remember that? Yes. And that had that jacuzzi tub in there. Yes. Now, if you walk through the door, and you do a right face, you would be facing that big screen TV. If you walk through the door, get in the middle of the room, do a right face, you're facing the big screen TV, correct? It would be 90 degrees to the TV. Okay. Half right. Yes. All right. Do a half right face. Point is, on that wall with the big screen TV, you then have a door to the left. Correct. And that goes into what you call the master bathroom. Is that correct? Or you call it a bathroom? Whatever you call it. Uh-huh. That has a jacuzzi. Right. And that area with the jacuzzi actually has a number of books, there's writing materials, there's VCRs, there's all sorts of things in there, is that correct? That's correct. There's a place to sit that, perhaps when the house was designed it was a vanity, but there's a place to sit, which appears to also include stacks of books and VCRs and things like that, 
correct? Yes. The actual water closet, as they say in England, but the toilet area is in a separate room off to the right of that, is that correct? That's correct. And there's a closet in there that has even more books and other things in it, is that correct? That's correct. And, in fact, right there, there's a back door to go out the back of the house, is there not? Yes, there is. Okay, and then if we back out of there and we come back, having done that half right, we're facing the big screen TV, on the right side there's another bathroom area, is that correct? Yes, there is. Okay, and there's a lot of stuff stored all over the place there, is that right, when you were there? Yes, there was. A lot of movie memorabilia. Yes. And you saw, you know, original things that appeared to be signed by all sorts of celebrities. Yes. Walt Disney, Shirley Temple, Steven Spielberg, people like that. Yes. And as you go in that bathroom area, there is an actual water closet or bathroom sink area that's off of that, is that correct? Correct. And then you go up those stairs, up to the area where the bed is that you showed us, is that correct? Yes. Now, what kind of equipment were you using to film this? I was using a Sony DVC-AM. Okay, and how do you operate that? It's a basic camera used by a lot of the media that you see outside. It's a larger format camera. Okay, do you put it on your shoulder? It's a shoulder mount held, yes. And you're looking through at, your eye level is roughly the level of the lens, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and how tall are you, sir? 5'10". Okay, so when you walk up the stairs, you're walking up the stairs shooting at your eye level for a 5'10 person, is that correct? That's correct. Alright, alright, let me venture into the unknown and try to work this, if I may, your honor. What I propose to do is, with the approval of the court, and if there's no objection from the people, I propose to fast forward and just go to the particular points that I want to highlight, if that's all right. I think that would be good. All right, laughter. I better not have any objection. And Mr. Sneddon's free to play it all again, if he wants. I'm not that stupid. Did you turn it off? It's already, okay, okay, I'm actually going to pause here quickly. There's a little shot right at the beginning. The first few seconds, when you put this in the machine, it shows this area. And I don't think you commented on this. There appear to be some big video games and some arcade kind of games in the picture here. I stopped it at 07. Yes, that's correct. Where is that located? I have been informed that this was the arcade room, which was a building behind the main residence. Now, when you say you've been informed, does that mean you took this? I did not shoot this video, no. Were you in that building? No, I was not. Do you know who shot this footage? Yes, I do. Who do you believe shot this? Detective Wittenbrock. Okay, now, your official designation at the time you were doing this was as a forensic deputy, is that, or what was the official title that you had? I was a detective assigned to the Forensics Bureau. Forensics Bureau. Now. There's what's called crime scene investigators, or sometimes referred to as CSI crime scene investigator. I'm not talking about television. I'm talking about in your department. Unlike television, in your department, a CSI may not be an actual forensic deputy, is that correct? That is my job, crime scene investigation. Oops. Need to get closer. I didn't know what the bailiff was doing to me right then. Laughter. I'm glad it was a friendly gesture. She wasn't going to hug you. I knew she was armed. I was afraid it might be something else. The, okay, so at least at some point in your department, they might have a sergeant go out and be a CSI for a particular crime scene, is that correct? Correct. But you now have a forensics bureau, and the forensic, the officers, the deputies assigned to the forensic bureau are supposed to be the crime scene investigators, forensic experts or specialists in your department, is that correct? Correct. All right, and you were one of them? Yes. How many forensic people did you have on November 18, 2003? I believe there were seven of us. How many of them were detailed to this particular case? All of them. Okay, 
were they all out there that day? Yes. Now, we were talking about who was out there. Besides however many police officers there were, there were a number of DAS investigators, is that correct? Correct. Those are people who work for the district attorney's office as opposed to the sheriff or the police department, is that correct? Correct. In addition to that, Mr. Sneddon actually came out and walked through Mr. Jackson's home, is that correct? Correct. And Mr. Franklin came out and did the same, is that correct, Deputy D.A. Franklin? I recall seeing him outside the residence. I don't know if he walked through. Now, let's go through this quickly, if we can. So we have some footage here. Let's see. I've got to point this right at it, I guess. There we go. We have some footage that fades out, and now the rest of this film is what you shot. Correct? That's correct. Okay. So, we've been over it, but that's the front door leading into the foyer. And in the distance you can see an area that has, well, let's see. You have your pointer there. Yes. Is there a big clock right in there? Do you recall? The pillar directly in this area, yeah. That's a big clock right there. All right, oops. I'll point that there. Now, we just saw off to the left. This may or may not work the way I'm. There we go. Okay. There's a fella standing there. Yes. Is that a real person? No, it's not. A mannequin. Yes, it is. There are a number of mannequins all over Neverland. Yes, there are. Some down by the, by the big gates, when you come through the big gates. Yes. In a little house there. They're all over the house in various places. Yes. Correct. That one appears to be a butler and he's holding a dish with cookies in it, is that right? That's correct. Did you go into Mr. Jackson's office? No, I did not. Let's see if I can fast forward here. Okay. And then that's a double door to the right of the door that we talked about. You go down a little hallway. There are books in the bookcases there. Is that right? That's correct. That's not the actual library we talked about, though, is it? No, it's not. If you go to the left through the double doors that you can see in the picture there, can you point that out to the... There is a set of double doors right here, which led into that library area also. Okay. And there's a library of books all over the place in there on bookshelves, correct? Correct. And if you go down this little hallway, that's where the double doors are to Mr. Jackson's suite. Yes. That you described. Okay. And just to the left of that, so we don't take too much time, I'll fast forward. But just to the left of this is the stairway. Outside the picture there's a stairway that goes up to the children's suite. Yes. Now, this is the area here at point 38, point 39. See the sitting area there? Yes, I do. Okay, this is what I was referring to as the living room. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, and then this is the family room. I said plaid. There's plaid on the wall, blue couches there. Yes. Family room. And that's, if you turn right around and did an about face from where you were just showing the family room, you do an about face, you're looking at the kitchen. Yes. And it's open. This counter is right in between the two, right? Yes, there is. And when you were there, when the, when the sheriffs arrived, there were a number of employees in this area, is that correct? I was told that there were, yes. Okay. And so this is an open area where employees are, guests might come in that sort of thing. Is that your understanding? I believe so, yes. All right, I'll fast forward again. Okay, back to the, that's down the hallway. And that's going into Mr. Jackson's area. We're at 153. That's going into his first floor area. And then to the right, this is, this is that right hand area that we talked about. It actually, you got into the closet here, I guess. We're looking at the screen at 203. Yes. But there's the right-hand bathroom. And you said if you face that big screen TV on the right side, the half right there, the big screen TV, on the right side is the bathroom area and closets, correct? Yes. There's the stairway. And you're coming up the stairway there with the camera up to your eye, and you get up to the top there, and you look in. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm going to object to that question. It's not at the top. 
The video speaks for itself in relationship to where it is. Overruled. Go ahead. Thank you. We're going to fast forward here. Now, we're back down. This is the area that you did the half right to the video screen, a big screen TV and you go to the left and you go into this area, correct? That's correct. And this you described as a bathroom. It does have that jacuzzi tub at the end, correct? Correct. Okay, and I'll try to fast forward. Can you show us where the door to the back is? It was behind the curtains in this area. If you go by that safe and you go to the right, and that's the actual door, is that correct? Yes. And those curtains are? The curtains fit outside to the garden, I would suspect, is that right? I believe so, yes. There are curtains over windows to the outside. All right, and then if you go to the right, there's a safe there. Yes. With a picture of a little girl on the thing. And if you go to the right there, that's an area, sort of a closet area, has a lot of books and other things in it, is that correct? Right here, this area, is that what you're referring to? Yes. That is the area that has the toilet in it. Are there two doors, or just one there? There's two doors on that side of the room. And you believe that's the one that goes to the toilet area? I believe so, yes. Okay, could that be the one that goes to the toilet area, the one on the right? The one on the left is the one that goes into the toilet area. You're right. There's a toilet. How about that? So the other one is the one that goes into the closet that has books and other memorabilia and stuff. Yes. Okay. And here we have the sort of living room. There's a couch. There's a fireplace. To the left, you can't see it, but there's a big screen TV, which we're about to see. There it is, with the movie cut out in front of it. And then you go back out the door. All right, I'm going to stop it. And we can turn it off, I think. Can you just hit, black screen? Now, how long was the actual video that you did in this, on this location? I mean, you did one video before the search. How long was that video? It was approximately an hour. Okay, and then you did more documentation afterwards. About how long was that? I did a total of three tapes. The post-search video was approximately an hour also. All right. So out of the first hour, you selected so many minutes that we just saw there, is that right? Yes. All right, now, you did take some still photos, you said, of various items. Did you take any still photos in one of the bathroom areas, which you've described as the bathroom? Yes. Did you take photos of a briefcase? Yes, I did. All right, now, at some point, as the forensic investigator in this case, did you take charge of the materials that were inside of that briefcase? The initial collection was done by the detectives who were conducting the search. It was later turned over to us, which was secured in our lab. All right, what, do you know the sheriff's number for the materials that were inside that briefcase? No, I do not. Does 317 ring a bell? I don't know. Okay, did you bring your reports with you? Yes, I did. Can you tell by looking at your various reports what the number of those items was? I do not show, I'm sorry. I do have one report that refers to number 317. Okay, so the contents of the briefcase were sheriff's item 317, is that correct? I was not involved with the assignment of the number. I don't know what number it was assigned at the time. Let's talk about numbers just for a second. We have exhibit numbers in court here that are assigned by the clerk. There may be reference to exhibit numbers from another proceeding, for instance, the grand jury. But when the sheriff, when your department seizes evidence, you mark down a number on an inventory sheet, and then you put that number on a tag, and you put that on the actual item that's seized, is that correct? That's correct. So you can keep track, no matter what numbers the court gives, or, say, the grand jury gives something, there's also the sheriff's number. And we can go back to that. And you can say that's the item, because it was given that number, is that correct? Yes. All right, now, do you remember checking the contents of the briefcase out of the sheriff's lockup? In other words, sheriff's evidence lockup to take to the lab. Your Honor, I'm going to object, because there were several briefcases taken. And I'm, it's unclear as to which one he's talking about. He has no personal knowledge as to what the itemization of the number was.
so lack of foundation would be the short way of putting it. Foundation. Sustained. Okay. All right. And you can't tell. You can't tell us from your reports what items you took out of the sheriff's lockup to do testing on. Yes, I can. Do you want to tell us what numbers those were? The original ones which I was assigned to begin with was 304, 306, 307, 309, and 313. Did you eventually take 317? The only involvement that I had with that initially was I picked up item 317 from the Department of Justice lab and took it back for photo documentation at our lab. All right. And what date was that? That was on May 20th, 04. Do you recall on January 30th assisting Deputy Herman? Is that Lisa Herman? Hemen. Sorry, Hemen. Do you recall assisting Deputy Hemen in going through various evidence items? Yes, I do. And among those evidence items was 317, one of those items. It may have been. I don't recall the specific number. And when you were working with Deputy Hemen, when you were assisting Deputy Hemen, what were you doing? Were you doing fingerprints? That was an alternate light source search. So you weren't looking for fingerprints? No. You were looking at the items to see if there was some other substance, fluid, blood, semen, something on them, is that right? Correct. And you didn't find anything on 317? I don't know. All right, okay. Can I have, and I suppose the clerk has them now, the exhibits that this witness referred to? And I think it was 4 or 5 through about 12. The photographs. Okay, thank you. Now, venturing into yet another area, with the court's permission, I'm going to try to use the overhead projector. And let's see here. I think we hit that button. And you hit the black screen button. And is it on? Yes, it is. How about that? I want to direct your attention. Okay. If you put the lights on it, there's a little more light, but then there's glare. If you look at Exhibit 8, which has been received in evidence, and I put it up on the overhead camera. That's one of the pictures you told us that you had taken, and then you put the labeling on to show what the various parts of the ranch were, correct? That's correct. And with your laser there, if you could, show us where the lake is. I think we can see it, but just to orient, because it's a little dark. The dark area, beginning in the center of the photograph, extending up and to the left, around. That area there. Okay. And right there where it says, guest house, those are the guest units on the property, is that correct? Yes. And they're right on the lake, is that right? That's correct. Did you determine what the numbers of the guest units were? One, two, three, four. No, I do not. There are four, though, four units in that area, correct? I'm not aware of how many there are. In any event, there's a guest house that appears to have more than one unit. Would you grant me that? Yes. There you go. And then the main house is depicted. You can see the main house from the guest house, correct? Yes. And, in fact, you just walk. How far is the main house from the guest house? 75 yards. Oh. Now, see the train station there? Yes. And the train station is actually up on a hill. Is that right? Yes. And there's a road that leads, in the picture that's going up, but actually goes downhill towards the main house and the guest house, is that correct? Yes. Can you show the jury where that is, please? This is the building of the train station here, and this is the road that leads up past the main house. So the main house is on the left and the guest house is on the right? Correct. And there's a clock that a large decorative clock that is located right in front of that train station, is that correct? Yes. And I'm going to put up number 12, which has been received into evidence. Number 12 is an aerial shot of that clock, is that correct? Yes, it is. And of course, from the air, everything looks flat on the ground. You don't really see the contours of the hills and so on, is that right? Correct. And, in fact, the clock itself is created on about a 45-degree angle, was it not? I was not in that area, so I couldn't say. So you took the picture from up above? Yes. And how high were you? What was your elevation when you took that picture? 
we were about 1200 to 1500 feet. Okay, so this clock would be visible from thousands of feet in the area, is that right? Yes. And it tells time. It's a working clock, correct? I do not know that. When you, when you were on the ground there, you didn't look over and see that clock. I did see the clock. So when you're on the ground, by the house and the guest units, you could look over and see that clock, correct? Yes. All right. And when I said, 45 degree angle, I'm not trying to quibble. I don't know. I didn't measure. Okay. But it's not on the ground flat, facing into space. Correct. It is at an angle. It's at an angle so you can see it from the property. Yes. Did you notice that there were a number of other clocks that were positioned in various place on this property? The only area that I was on the property was at the main residence. Okay. Let me just have one moment. Your honor, please. I have no further questions. Thank you. Th no questions, your honor. Your honor, I. You may step down, officer. Thank you. I have the next witness ready. It's five minutes to break time. Do you want to take the break five minutes early before we start that witness? No, we can start the witness. It will take two minutes to get her here. Let me use ten seconds of the two minutes, your honor. Well, the witness is on its way. You can go ahead. I was just going to say before Deputy Lafferty leaves, that we would like him to remain on recall. And I think we will have to call him back when we have other officers to testify to the chain of custody on the items we're talking about. All right, officer. You'll remain on call, please. Thank you, your honor. Judge, I'm sorry. My understanding was that the witness was right behind your door, right off your room in the anteroom there, and it would take less than 20 seconds to get here. It's one of the children in this case. I apologize, but that was my understanding. It's not, she's not up in my office. Jill, right off your room in the anteroom there, and it would take. Come forward to the witness stand, please. Remain standing. Face the clerk. Over here, raise your right hand. Yes. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. My name is Dave Ellen Arvizo. D-A-V-E-L-L-I-N-A-R-V-I-Z-O. You're going to have to scoot real close. Good morning. Good morning. You're going to lean right into that and talk to it so everybody can hear what you have to say. Okay. Okay. Miss Arvizo, how old are you? I'm 18 years old. And you currently go to school, without giving me the name of the school, but a school. Yes. And what level are you in the school? I'm a freshman in college. And do you have a full-time job? Yes, I work full-time. Just a moment. Just a moment. Mr. Sneddon, they can't hear. It is time for the break. Maybe you could work with her on the mic for a moment after we take our break. We'll take our break. 